Hi guys, I have a library book sale book haul. Yay! It's that time of year and it's fantastic. This is a book sale that I went to last weekend and I have a bigger haul from this huge store sale that I went to this week. But first, this nice little one. It was smaller than I expected it to be, but the books were good quality books. I thought they were nice, they weren't gross, and they were arranged nicely. So anyway, okay. I got The Bay of Foxes by Sheila Kohler, the author of Becoming Jane Eyre. This is an arc. Paris, 1978. DeWitt, a young and beautiful Ethiopian refugee, lives in squalor. Despite being the educated son of wealthy parents, he roams the streets of Peri Paris penniless. By chance, DeWitt spots the famous French author M, who at 60 is at the height of her fame, elegant yet faded. Seduced by DeWitt's grace and moving story, M invites him to live with her in a wealthy quarter of Paris. He makes himself indispensable, or so he thinks. M brings him to her Sardinian villa beside Cala de... The Bay of Foxes. There, under the Mediterranean sun, DeWitt finds love and temptation and perfects the art of deception. So it sounds intriguing. I'm not going to lie, I bought it because I like the whole famous, mysterious author bit. The Lace Reader by Brenonia Berry. It's a New York Times bestseller. Towner Whitney, the self-confessed unreliable narrator, hails from a family of Salem women who can read the future in the patterns in lace and who have guarded a history of secrets going back generations. Now the disappearance of two women is bringing Towner back home to Salem and is bringing to light the shocking truth about the death of her twin sister. Ooh, Salem witches. Yes. Elizabeth Brundage, somebody else's daughter. This story is about a young couple that had to give up their daughter for adoption. Years later, they come across her again in another town and they've sort of cleaned up their act and are more stable. And what happens? Apparently the adoptive family have some hidden past that they ran away from and it sounds intriguing. And it says, Brundage, the author of The Doctor's Wife, has given us another electric, suspenseful tale of conflicted characters and the fractured landscape of the American psyche. Snow Angels by Stuart Onan. Um, Snow Angels weaves together the stories of two small-town Pennsylvania families connected by tragedy, narrated by adult author who continues to be haunted by memories of his parents' divorce and a uh, violent death of his beloved babysitter. Um... He, the, so these are his stories and his unraveling family and the circumstances leading up to Annie's death form the backdrop for an intimate tale of the price of love and belonging told in a spare, translucent, and unexpectedly tender voice. So there's some sort of mystery. Something's happening with the babysitter. Department of Speculation by Jenny Offill. Offill? This has actually received some awards. I don't remember which award. This is and uncorrected proof. Um, it resembles no book I've read before. If I tell you that it's funny and moving and true, that it's as compact and mysterious as the neutron, that it tells a profound story of love and parenthood while invoking Keats, Kafka, Einstein, Russian cosmonauts, and advice for the housewife of 1894, will you please simply believe me and read it? That's a blurb by Michael Cunningham. It's won an award and it is very sparsely written. So this should not take long to read. A Train in Winter by Caroline Moorhead. An extraordinary story of women, friendship, and resistance in occupied France. This is 100 Notable Books, the New York Times Book Review, 2011. I buy my books based on stickers. A remarkable biography. Moorhead deftly wields period detail. The Paris Salon, for instance, in which proud 18 Angora cats dressed in satin to tell the story of a captivating woman who kept her self, sense of self amid the vic vicissitudes of politics.
This is the story of women who distributed anti-Nazi leaflets, printed sub subversive newspapers, hid resistors, secreted Jews to safety, transported weapons, and conveyed clandestine messages. Clandestine? Clandestine messages. A train in winter draws on interviews with these women and their families. German, French, and Polish archives and documents held by World War II resistance organizations to uncover a dark chapter of history that offers an inspiring portrait of ordinary people, of bravery and survival, and of the remarkable enduring power of female friendship. So I was particularly drawn to this book because it's a great story about what women did. These were women that didn't have to do these things. They were standing up for what they believed in, and they made a difference. And it's also a World War II story. I am I am worried that it's going to be sad. I worried about Unbroken also, and I got through Unbroken, so I'm hoping that I can get through this. And last but not least, I picked up a biography of Margaret Atwood by Natalie Cook. I haven't flipped through it, but it looks like it's a very nice biography. When was it published? 1998. Margaret Atwood's. Had almost 20 more years added between now and then, but there are gorgeous pictures. So I'm interested to read about her earlier life. And I'm also reading one of her books for book club this month. So I thought it was perfect timing. So those are. Say hi, Judy. Say hi, Judy. This is Judy the cutie. Hi, Judy. Say hi, book group. She doesn't like to be held. I tell her every day that hugs mean I love you. Oh, here's Jones. Oh. Hi, book tube. Hi. I'm such a big guy. I'm so handsome. I'm so handsome. He likes to be held. So pretty. I love my kitty cats. So there's one book sale down. I have another book haul to film from a huge church book sale. And then I know there's another book sale coming up in May. So I'm so excited. It's the season for library book sales. If you've been to a book sale lately, let me know down below what was your best find. I don't know which one is my best find. I'm really excited about this one, but also extremely intrigued about this one. So, that's all I have for today. I will talk to you later. Bye.